Welcome, dear viewers, to a new episode of Dialogue Horizon. Uh, in this dialogue, we are going to dedicate the whole episode to one important issue, which is the real hardship of the people of Sudan these days, which is manifested in the skyrocketing prices of the necessities and commodities and services and the devaluation, the continue, continued devaluation of the Sudanese pound till it reached an unprecedented threshold, which is, uh, I think it's a dangerous threshold. So we will try to cover this issue in depth as much as we can, and that's why we are uh, glad to host two of our young uh, experts in this, in this field, uh, Ferris, we have our, our, our guest, uh, Bakri Osman. Bakri Osman is a country director of an American international company, Sierra, working international, Sierra International, working in the development of um, countries, especially in transitional periods like, like, like Sudan. Uh, so he will, he, will, he will tell us first about the, his company and then we'll uh, continue in the episode. Also, we have our friend Ibrahim Sabra, he's an expert also, uh, not on only the field of economics, but in the business, international business and local business, and we spent most of his time in the States. So the two gentlemen will definitely give us a useful insight to the viewer about, about their personal views, because all people maybe they are dwelling on, 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 on outdated solutions. So we are looking for, for, for new solutions. So my first question to Bakri, being an, in a company, country director yes. of an American international company here in Sudan, which is concerned or works on the area of, of, of international development in traditional periods or it's something as if it is tailored to Sudan at this time. Exactly. So, so it, it, is, it, is, it is something good. So my first question is that, as you maybe uh, you were here for since uh, last year, yeah. um, you have definitely noticed the growing hardship and agony of people due to the uh, high prices of the commodities, necessary commodities, and the scarcity of most of them, like fuel, like and the services, the intermittent uh, supplies of power and water, and uh, the skyrocketing price, yes. uh, value of, 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 of the dollar compared to the pound till it reached an unprecedented level of about 330 this week. So, first of all, what do you think, what, what are the reasons for this continued deterioration? It is a protracted deterioration for a long time. Actually, it, it started two, three years ago, but now it's still continuing, so it's a pr protracted uh, agony due to, to failure in, 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 in applying suitable measures and uh, procedures so that they can, they can at least circumvent an imminent economic collapse. Till now we, are not, we did not reach the economic col collapse, but it is around the corner yes. Yes. to avoid that. First of all, what are the reasons in your opinion? What are the reasons for this deterioration, continued deterioration? And what do you have in mind about the remedy, how to go about it? Okay, thank you so much first. Um, uh, thank you so much for having me. I'm very happy to be here. Uh, uh, firstly, let me um, uh, introduce uh, Sayara uh, International. Uh, it's, a, it's an international uh, development firm. Uh, we are uh, based, uh, our HQ is located in uh, Washington, D.C., in the U.S., and we have country offices around uh, around the world. As you mentioned, we specialize in uh, different areas, starting from uh, research in, in different uh, sectors, uh, as well as um, uh, implementation of uh, programs covering areas like uh, good governance, uh, strategic communication, and um, and etc. Uh, we do specialize as well in, as you said, in transitioning societies, which is a very interesting period for. Um, 
for us to be uh, to be here uh, as an organization and to me personally as a as Sudanese uh, uh, being in Khartoum in this uh, period of time to um, really witness a new era in uh, in Sudan uh, to answer your question I would say that it's very the, the before I go there I want to say that one of the main issues that I, every time uh, I try to uh, address that when we approach an economical uh, a crisis or e economical problem uh, as we are facing today in Sudan, we tend to forget uh, the people. We tend to forget how much um, the economic uh, approach uh, as well as the uh, uh, policy is affecting the people. So I would like to emphasize that uh, it's very important for us to humanize the economy and to think more or less uh, of people uh, rather as human beings uh, uh, who are being affected on a daily basis by, uh, by policy change uh, or uh, economic uh, crisis. Uh, as for the reasons, uh, I believe that the, the, the main issue um, or the main issues that is resulting of today's uh, catastrophic economy in Sudan, it is not something new, it is not something recent as well. Uh, it is true that over the last 30 years there have been a systematic destruction of the economy. However, if you look at Sudan since even since before the independence, um, you know, uh, post-colonialism as well, uh, it was a very, uh, there was always a, a huge gap in the economic factor uh, regarding policy making, as well as l really laying the foundation for, uh, for, uh, for a healthy economy. Uh, the change of governments, uh, the, uh, the several uh, authoritarian regimes uh, that has, you know, uh, a lot of interest uh, was very different from, you know, basically restoring uh, or building uh, a base for a healthy uh, for a healthy economy. So I would say that the issue is actually quite quite old. Uh, it is a a, um, a, a group of uh, of, uh, of problems that have been uh, growing uh, over time. And today we find ourselves in a, in a very difficult situation as a result of this uh, of this continuous. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, basically bad, uh, bad uh, <coughs> economical uh, uh, approaches and, and policies. Mm. So, so you think that the, 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 the something inherited for quite a long time and being carried over from uh, uh, regime from regime to regime without exactly. looking directly to the to the <coughs> which is if you put the human being as a target. It could, could could have been better that you exactly have, yes. exactly that's what you exactly are saying. exactly yeah uh, later we will come to the solution but later we'll, when we go down the episode we'll we'll discuss some about your views about how to go about it how to to avoid or circumvent this this, this imminent situation if it continues like this definitely both of you you are you are you are the uh, the, the business and you know the business is very sensitive to economy and the strength of the economy. So definitely, if it continues like this without uh, intervention, surgical actually, we need surgical intervention, this will lead to collapse. collapse. Yeah. Okay, look, uh, Abdurrahim, Abdurrahim Jamal Sabra, also you are in the business, in the, this is your specialization, the business. When, when, when the government, they always, sometimes some they talk about uh, monopoly, they don't want monopoly, they want some people, some, 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 some people, they talk about monopoly. monopoly. Monopoly means people hoarding, keeping clothes and selling it at any price. But regulating the prices or the market economy without intervention, which one do you believe is suitable for Sudan? To have it complete, free, liberal market, everybody sells at any price he wants, or the intervention of the the government is important to at least adjust and fix uh, prices. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Omar. Um, initially, I would think that um, the government would want a monopoly in strategic products or strategic areas which are um, deemed maybe uh, politically dangerous to, uh, um, uh, to liberate or markets that are uh, dangerous to liberate such as uh, uh, wheat and fossil fuel here in Sudan was considered politically dangerous. Um, to liberate. I can't necessarily say that a monopoly in all terms would be good or that liberating, um, uh, liberating a, a market, uh, having free trade in a certain market is also good. Um, we know that presently in Sudan, 
there is no um, infrastructure uh, capabilities or policies in place in order for markets to be liberated or uh, for free trade uh, to exist. Um, essentially, um, this um, type of methodology is effective, but it comes with a lot of accompanying aspects that are not present uh, in Sudan. We've seen now that the government has tried to uh, liberate fossil fuel. Um, uh, I can't see that it's successful and we're still having shortages and uh, the USD to SDG is still uh, devaluating. So I'm, I'm, I can't see the initial benefit of uh, saying that uh, the fossil fuel uh, uh, market will be completely liberated, maybe because the regulation or the regulatory body which controls uh, markets does not have the adequate uh, laws or policies that should accompany uh, such liberalization. Alternatively, uh, we've seen uh, developed countries who still have monopolies in certain areas because that area is deemed too maybe politically uh, important or that uh, they don't want to um, uh, get into something uh, of such in with consumers such as um, South Africa. Uh, they still have uh, a monopoly in terms of uh, electricity, whereas you have in the UK 73 different uh, uh, electric providers and both countries seem to have it functioning well and customers seem to be, uh, or uh, the population seems to be satisfied. One is a monopoly and the other is a completely uh, free market approach. So, so it means that, or in your opinion, that you can't give a specific solution or a specific method for uh, to be applied to any country. You mean any country has, has it, its own uh, characteristics and features and uh, which which governs the application yes. of either monopoly or market economy. Yeah. So we have to go about see the the, 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 the suitable, the most important uh, item. Uh, maybe I think it depends on the the, 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 the productivity and maybe it depends on the, the trade balance. If, if, if you are in surplus, uh, there should be no problem about applying any, any, any of these laws. Uh, fundamentally, uh, in any market, you would need uh, infrastructure and policies in place in order to determine a lot of aspects. We know that in Sudan currently, our um, uh, problem, if I could add into uh, what Bakri said, is more of an institutional problem, it's more of a policy problem, it's more of a um, uh, security problem. A lot of market failures exist because of uh, non-tangible aspects that we just uh, mentioned. So you cannot have a, a certain recipe and follow. You have to consider all the different aspects and add the human effect like uh, Bakri mentioned earlier in order to come up with the appropriate solution for the appropriate time that we're in right now. Okay. Okay, Bakri, Bakri Osman, there is a, also a very sticky issue which is part and parcel of the recipe of the IMF and the World Bank which is the issue of subsidies. Yes. Just tell us if, what about subsidies and its application on, on countries. What are the basis for, or what are the necessities for, for applying subsidies? Subsidies mean the government pays. Yes. Uh, uh, selling service or selling for commodity <coughs> at, at loss yes. the, the government. So in general, can you tell us about subsidies and when uh, subsidies are good, when are bad, and what's the effect, the social effect on, on people? Yes, uh, basically, so one thing to also to clarify, uh, I know that there is a lot, uh, globally speaking, there is a lot of narratives, uh, you know, in today's world, uh, political economy narrative, uh, that is very critical of, uh, of the World Bank, IMF uh, policies, and the recipes in, uh, in countries, specifically in transitioning societies. Whether we agree or disagree with, uh, with, uh, with their policy, uh, I believe that the World Bank, the IMF, are a major financial uh, and economical institutions um, that basically uh, uh, sits on the top of the uh, of the uh, global economy and Sudan is, is in no we are not in isolation of the global economy so I believe that we uh, it's very important that the approach the economic approach that we uh, we use uh, in dealing with the World Bank and IMF has to be something that is balanced between uh, you know basically being part of the global economy uh, trying to adapt to the requirements of the IMF and the World Bank uh, and other financial institutions, global financial institutions. At the same time, taking in consideration how can we really amend uh, these solutions into, into the reality. The subsidies in, in, in the abstract, if we speak about subsidies, 
uh, basically uh, governments normally try to uh, to use subsidies to address uh, certain uh, certain issues sometimes the the, the reasons for subsidizing uh, a certain strategic commodity or service are economical just like what happened in uh, in the in France uh, uh, in Germany uh, in the US in the uh, recent um, uh, global uh, crisis in between 2008 2012 where certain governments put subsidies to support uh, the um, the uh, vital uh, sectors, just like transportation. And then you have other uh, kind of subsidies as, you know, that has been happening in Sudan, which is political reasons, uh, basically devoted to um, make the people feel that, that false sense of security, that false sense of uh, feeling that, okay, things are going better, but in its essence, it's, it's really not. Uh, so I am personally I'm against uh, subsidies Absolutely. because in both in both uh, for both reasons are, are very difficult to the to the to the you know government to handle maybe in some aspects as, as I mentioned uh, it could help uh, in a certain uh, moment of t uh, uh, a certain moment of time but on the long term is very is very destructive at the same time I take in consideration that with the existing government today subsidies and every economical and political result that came from subsidies were in inherited. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, we're talking about a very long period of time where people themselves got used to subsidies. So we don't really know what is it, like how to live, uh, how to be part of an economy that is not subsidized. Mm -hmm. And I think this is going to be one of the biggest challenges that uh, the transitioning government is, is working to mitigate. And I do believe it will take uh, a, a very long time to, uh, to fully uh, recover from uh, from uh, a subsidized uh, uh, approach to the economy. Uh, if we, of course, implement as well uh, uh, at the moment uh, all the right policies uh, uh, to solve uh, these uh, these economic issues. Okay, so this is uh, this is. I think Abdul Rahim, you, you need to add some to because when we talk now, uh, Bakri is adamant about 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 the the the, 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 the harms that. Uh, which will, will be brought by, by, by subsidies. Actually, it is kind of distortion. Some people, they call it distortion to the economy. This is the actual economy. This is not the actual when you, you talk about subsidies. Subsidies have some uh, social or political impact. So what can you add on this? Having in mind that, bearing in mind that Sudan now is trying to cope with the IMF and the World Bank and part of our government now, they are they are they are they are uh, for 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 um, lifting all t together the subsidies and abide and comply with the conditions of the IMF and uh, World Bank. What can you add to what Bakri said about subsidies and the relation with the IMF? Um, <coughs> uh, subsidies uh, essentially would be used by the government to um, to offset some market failure. And uh, here in Sudan, we've uh, already known that uh, the um, strategic commodities are subsidized. The government needs to essentially remove subsidies in order to have a functioning operating economy and to uh, meet uh, um, all the standards which are set by the IMF or the World Bank. Um, we don't necessarily need to remove them uh, entirely. We need to re replace them, let's say, from subsidized uh, product to direct payments to the general population which needs uh, support. This w at one time, this uh, simultaneously would be a solution to removing subsidies, and it would still allow the targeted uh, part of the segments or of uh, the population which needs support to receive direct payments, which offset uh, the areas where in which the government is trying to support uh, low-income uh, uh, low in low-income families. So I think that it is 100% necessary to remove subsidies. It just differs in how rationally this will be implemented in Sudan and over what period, because we've already seen how removing subsidies suddenly can have a ripple effect through the economy and have catastrophic uh, reactions from the public and uh, in terms of demonstration or a polit political unrest. So, so one, 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 of, one, of the, one of the critics hidden to subsidies so applying subsidies at large to the whole, when, when you talk about subsidies, 
This means that everybody is benefiting from the ben subsidies. Yeah. That's what exactly what you said. Yeah. The low income, the medium income, and the high income, and the rich people, the wealthy people, they all they all benefit from the subsidies, which is one of the loopholes, one, one, one of the, 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 the bad things on the subsidies. Plus, when you subsidize something, when your prices are very low, actually not really low, this will also encourage the smuggling around yes. to the borders yes. when you are prices. So, Bakri, what can you add to this? Because this is important. Abdul Rahim is saying that he is <laughs> suggesting that people to be the, to target the low income those who are really affected by the prices. Some people are not affected by the prices. Yes. Uh, to target this by direct, direct, to say, uh, direct, payments. Direct, di direct payment to, to, to which needs a, a lot of effort to synchronize and to, to know exactly who are the needy and who, who are the um, uh, low income. Yeah. It depends because not all people are working in the government. Most of the people are outside the government. Yeah. So what, what, what about in this issue, what can you add to what Abdul Rahim said about subsidies? Subsidies, we agree, both of you agree that something, it's a distortion, it's not good. Yeah. It will take us nowhere, yes. it will definitely, and it proved to be uh, not working because subsidies apply since independence, till now. Governments are trying to gain cheap popularity of the, by, by politics, yes. people, but the actual life is, is, is not like this. So that's why it ended to this catastrophic deterioration. Yes. Abdul Rahim is suggesting that to target the needy and the low income, uh, to, but to apply subsidies. Yes. Uh, not to apply subsidies, to lift subsidies altogether. Yes. What can you add to his argument? You know, as, as Abdul Rahim said, and as you also mentioned, um, subsidies is more like uh, an economic uh, addiction. Let's put it this way. It is, it is addictive, very addictive. Once people are uh, living in a subsidized uh, economy, by definition, when you try to pull them out of that uh, environment, there will be withdrawal symptoms. There will be people who are rioting. There will be people who are not happy with these, uh, yes. with these, uh, with these strategies. Mm -hmm. But if we think about it from the, you know, from the bigger perspective, um, it is, a really, it is an, an addiction. We really have to get rid of it because it really burden the, uh, the, the financial system. I mean, c big countries and, you know, w w some of the wealthiest countries in the world do not have subsidies because at the end of the day, it is a very dangerous approach to, uh, to use. Uh, as for the uh, point Abdurrahim mentioned as to really target uh, certain, so certain communities or uh, vulnerable groups, low-income people, uh, keep in mind that the majority of the, of the Sudanese population are under poverty line, global poverty line. There are really good initiatives that is now happening, uh, uh, we know, in collaboration with, uh, with the international community, such as the Family Support Program, which is something is, you know, is about to, to, uh, to actually um, uh, start, and then people would actually start feeling these uh, this, um, uh, mitigation uh, techniques to, you know, directly, uh, you know, uh, sh uh, b basically, you know, identify certain uh, communities, uh, certain areas, certain group of people, and then directly support them with, uh, with, uh, with, with cash on a monthly basis. So we will definitely, this is going to be something that is going to be very helpful. However, I also have a little bit of, uh, you know, I have some concerns around, uh, you know, what are the database that we're building this, uh, you know, yeah. do we have database, do we have legitimate data that would actually allow us to reach uh, all the communities that we're targeting. Uh, second, is the government going to apply certain political reform policies uh, at the same time that these programs are being implemented? Because these solutions are not a long-term solution. It's a solution to basically address uh, a small problem, uh, sorry, a, a, a small for a small period of time uh, to mitigate the economic uh, complications that the people are facing. But if the government is not prepared, if they do not have the right uh, political and economical approaches towards the economic problem in general, just such as, uh, uh, you know, being willing to uh, liberate or uh, fluctuate the currency in a, in a clear plan, at the same time, you know, using a lot of uh, you know, using a lot of experience from the international community uh, to, uh, and also from neighboring countries to really address the main issues of, uh, of the Sudanese economy, such as, you know, making the, the environment for uh, investment attractive, 
uh, having clear laws and policies, uh, restoring the trust of the people in the, in the banking sector. Because if you work on one issue and you leave uh, the other factors, then at the end of the day, you will have a short-term solution that will lead you to a bigger problem uh, um, uh, on the long term. So I think these are very, very, very important point that, uh, points that we need to keep, uh, to keep in mind when addressing uh, the, the issue uh, of subsidies. Exactly, yeah. Before, before lifting or before deciding on the, uh, also targeting the low-income people is a little uh, difficult exactly. thing. With, Ex in exactly. the absence of correct database about uh, those who are really in need, Exactly. Uh, it might it might lead to some corruption or to some uh, exactly. people taking full advantage, not an idiot. Exactly. So we, we can agree that there is uh, there will be challenges, uh, you know, before starting and while starting and after even uh, you know finishing uh, the program, but it is definitely uh, you know some of the uh, one of the best solutions that have been proposed so far, given the reality of the situation, and I believe that the international community is really committed and serious about. Uh, supporting uh, the economic uh, crisis in Sudan uh, but as I said we really need to be prepared for that from as a government uh, you know we need to have a working relationship we need to be uh, prioritize the people uh, everything else can wait but for now it's really really important that people you know come together and focus on um, on uh, on solutions that will benefit the people uh, and li leave everything else for for later on Okay. Okay. Uh, good, Abdul Rahim. You have you, you we have an, another big problem now. Always there is there well, actually there was and it still continue a deficit of about five billion dollars for quite a long time. Actually, since the secession of the South, when the South seceded on 2011, and 75 percent of the oil proceeds went or lost by Sudan at that time, it was one country. Since that time, in, 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 in 2011, uh, Sudan lost 75% of its uh, main item of the budget revenues, uh, on which the budget, in the first 10 years of the hosted regime, they were completely dependent on the oil for 10 years, since 1999 to uh, 2011, almost for, for, for uh, more than about, 12, about 10 or 11 years, completely dependent. The budget was completely dependent on the oil proceeds, and that's why they forgot the agriculture, infrastructure. There was complete destruction in the area. The Jazeera scheme completely came down, failed. The infrastructure failed. Everything failed. So now still the deficit is continuing, Abdul Rahim, it is going. Do you think, can the government or the Bank of Sudan do anything about, about um, stopping or, 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 or uh, doing something on the, this, this is increase, this daily increase on the, on the daily uh, the dollar rate? Uh, and do you think that uh, arresting or, or, or uh, apprehending the, the dealers of the dollar will solve the problem or it aggravates the problem because when they disappear in custodies, the, the, their money disappeared with them, so it will add insult to injury. Already we have a problem on what was available in these dealers, uh, these uh, people, you put them uh, behind bars. So what do you think, what can Bank of Sudan do in, in, in this area to, to, to control or to improve the value of the Sudanese pound? Um, initially we have to agree that uh, it is unlikely that there is a short-term solution. Everything that you look at is long-term basis. Um, Bank of Sudan probably has little control um, economically over what happens, except uh, you know, trying to um, float the currency or uh, unify the exchange rate. And even in order to do that, they need reserves which would allow them to uh, float and actually be able to provide people for uh, foreign uh, um, USD, let's say, when uh, it's requested for a a business transaction. So Bank of Sudan has little control. And when we look at arresting uh, black market uh, dealers. dealers, you need to look at the source of the problem again, because the government is still going to be the biggest buyer of uh, USD or uh, any foreign currency in the black market, because it still cannot uh, generate enough 
to fulfill the needs which it already um, specified that uh, it will be needing, whether it's uh, for um, fossil fuel or wheat or medicine. Uh, the biggest buyer in the country is still the government. So an, any increase in the price, we would uh, adherently know that the government needs to make a large purchase for some sort of commodity or some sort of uh, need. So in order to arrest minor dealers or dealers, we need to resolve the problem initially. And uh, this cannot be done instantly. I, I would think that the government would, um, if they cannot have a, a donor or a, a country or um, EU or any, any body that can support with uh, their needs so that they wouldn't need as much, uh, and then maybe over time this deficit will be closed, we're going to be digging ourselves in this hole uh, bigger and bigger as we um, uh, move along. Mm -hmm. So, so, so you, you believe that e no solution right now without, I, I think it is something like, like, like an initial dose for some, for somebody who had a stroke. They give an initial dose, initial dose before the prolonged medicine, they give him the medicine. If he has a heart attack, uh, they put some, some, some tablets under the tongue until he's okay, after maybe 24 hours, they start giving him the remedies. So that's what Abdullahim ended his, 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 his uh, contribution. He said that unless we have contribution donors, friends. Yes. So this takes me right to the area of the political stability. And donors cannot give you, even in, in our region, rich countries, they have their own interests. So they can, if, if you go in their direction, they're active, definitely they'll give you the initial dose, which is about four or five billion. Yeah. Uh, we have the uh, experience in another country we want, want, don't, don't want to mention. They, they immediately, at the onset of the, the new regime in, 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 in a neighboring country, they received about 12 or 15 billion dollars, which helped them to continue without uh, problems. Yes. So can you tell us about the, the, this, this element, donors or friends, they will not help at a situation, a fragile situation, political situation like this. Yes. Now everybody knows that it is situation. So what can you add to, to, to this argument of Abdul Rahim that some body has to give the initial dose? Yes, it is, it is true. It is an unfortunate situation where we uh, today find ourselves in, to be honest, uh, uh, unfortunately, you know, uh, for example, even speaking about the black market, mm. it is a um, it is an existing situation, and there is a need for the black market now. Unfortunately, if you think of the economy as as uh, as as it is, if you imagine this, the, the 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 basically the market in Sudan without without the black market, there will be a, a severe shortage of uh, of uh, hard cash, in order for people, you know, to uh, you know import uh, vital. Um, um, commodities and needs just like medicine and, and etc. So it is, it, is a, it is a problem. So of course as a way to uh, uh, basically um, end the black market, fluctuation of the currency must happen. However, as Abdul Rahim and, and yourself said that there has to be, there is a need, of course, we cannot fluctuate the currency fully without having a reserve of, uh, of um, foreign currency in the bank. I, uh, luckily enough, I believe that Sudan, uh, you know, as a country where we are uh, located geographically, uh, politically, now we stand in a place where we are quite, uh, let's say, uh, you know, neutral. We do not have any, you know, we're not, uh, we're not a, a, a Muslim Brotherhood uh, state anymore. We're not uh, a fundamentalist state. So there is, a, there is this kind of, you know, uh, approach towards Sudan that is being very, uh, very, um, um, very balanced in its international relations, which is a very good thing. Uh, we definitely need to invest more uh, into ways to attract, uh, you know, uh, basically uh, um, foreign currencies uh, to Sudan. Uh, we can definitely um, get support from other other uh, other countries. But this is as well, you know, this is a short-term uh, solution. We. If we implement that, we would need as well a very serious um, uh, policy making when it comes to the economic situation in Sudan. And this is, this is where the gap lies. I believe that the international community, without naming any states, very committed and would really like to help Sudan. But in the absence of the right 
political approaches in the absence of the uh, of the uh, you know Stability. government interrelation that is you know quite uh, coherent and harmonized it will be very difficult for people to uh, to invest in sudan leave alone the private sector uh, there is a lot of companies who are interested to come and invest in sudan and that is a great uh, asset but you have to ask yourself what are the consequences if i come to sudan why would i go to sudan now uh, you know there there is a lot of challenges that people are facing and i think these challenges could be solved uh, with the right policies at least you know take a big portion of these uh, of these challenges out uh, restore trust in the banking sector as well uh, then you will have um, you know without dependence on on uh, on donors community or partially uh, being independent you can actually uh, uh, restore uh, that economical uh, uh, basically well-being but it is it, it's definitely very important that we have to keep in mind that it requires a lot of work and a lot of focus from the from, from the government as well as I said I believe that the international community is committed and they are serious about helping Sudan. Let's just, we need to get ourselves together first. To qualify ourselves exactly. first, yes, to get exactly. prepared for this. Exactly. Uh, that's exactly what, uh, what, what, what we all think that um, economies connected and interconnection inter 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 between economy and politics. Exactly. Politics, when we talk about politics, it's about stability, uh, no civil wars, no, without this, economy cannot be uh, adjusted. Uh, for example, like I tell Abdurrahim, one of the issues, maybe we all, we all forget that, uh, Abdurrahim or Bakri. Uh, I heard and we know the estimates of the Sudanese expatriates in, in, in the Gulf area and in different parts, about three, four million. Uh, I, 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 I heard it from, from the head of the expatriate uh, bureau in Khartoum sometime a few years ago that they expect or they evaluate, the, 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 they estimate the proceeds or the transfer of expatriate about six billion dollars, but not coming through the banking system. It's outside by the, this uh, deal. That's why I fully agree with you. Black market, you cannot do without black market at this stage. Yes. So it's needless to go and go for arresting people following the same mistakes of the Austin regime. Exactly. They used to do whenever the price of the dollar goes up, they go and uh, uh, put in, uh, under uh, behind bars few of the dealers, and still the problem grows and becomes worse. So Abdurrahim, what are the, the we know good examples of two countries. I tell you about two countries, Ethiopia and Egypt. They depend on the expatriates. They they, they funnel their money to the country because they have, and I don't know how, but here Sudan, Sudan, all governments, they failed 30 years with the Austin regime, they failed to bring the money of these expatriates to, through the official channels. What, what, what is the reason? What do you think the reason? Or what can we do about it? How can we, 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 we attract this, these people to, to, to transfer their money through the official banking system? Well, I think initially in the past uh, we had uh, a banking issue because of the, um, the U.S. sanctions. Yes. Uh, so this might be the major part of uh, why a lot of bank transactions weren't even possible um, uh, for the past uh, decades. <coughs> um, after this has been removed, which is most recent, we imagine that uh, the banking system would need to ramp up their ability to conduct transactions uh, worldwide. And um, I think we've mentioned previously that um, it doesn't happen at uh, the blink of an eye. These institutions need to have a lot of policies and regulations in place in order to comply with the international standards, such as um, anti-money laundering uh, policies, uh, which uh, these would be essential in able to do uh, transactions with the U.S. or, or EU and uh, other developed countries. Uh, this barrier has now been removed. It's now a matter of time how it would be enticing for these people to actually bring their money back through, the, through that channel. Um, as long as we have a black market which is um, at more of a value than the banking channel, it's unlikely that anyone would use uh, the, the banking, banking channel. Unlikely. So that's what I was uh, going to ask you. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, and we need to have a unified price. But uh, how this will be achieved, we already know that you know, the government needs reserves in order to achieve this. They need to remove subsidies. But 
uh, I think uh, the intelligence uh, of this government is going to come down to how all of this is laid out over what period, because you can't just pull the Band-Aid off. It will take uh, time, maybe two to five years. Uh, if you look at the standard uh, time it takes an African nation to uh, move from such a period. And um, with the right policies in place, uh, because if we look at export now in Sudan, it's not an uh, exchange rate uh, problem. It's nothing but an infrastructure problem. So there are a lot of things that you know uh, should not be hung on that uh, aspect of uh, sanctions and all the U.S. exchange rates and all this. This solves a lot of problems. It causes a lot of issues. But we still have a lot of issues and a lot of problems which are, uh, let's say, isolated from this and can be solved uh, immediately or quicker, such as uh, infrastructure not just uh, Port Sudan, infrastructure in terms of roads, uh, you know, availability of water, availability of electricity, mm -hmm. especially for the agricultural sector, which employs 80% of your population. Okay, it, it, the agriculture is a, very, is a very good aspect. That's why I will ask uh, Bakri about it, because he is the country the, um, uh, director of international development uh, company uh, station in Washington, America, and we hear that. Some time ago, a few months ago, that and still now it is being repeated by the delegates coming from uh, Washington, that there were about 10 companies that are coming to in the area of agriculture. The, I'm sure they are interested in the area of agriculture, but they know agriculture is so that has uh, the potential for, 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 for agriculture. It has the land, it has the arable land, it has the water, it has uh, everything is available, but still they need the technology and the money, the capital. So will this country, with these companies who are coming, which are coming, um, suppose they will come, uh, come, definitely will come on, 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 on a certain uh, system, like the boot system, yeah. built, operate, own, and transfer after a certain time, say 10, 20 years, probably. Maybe this, for me, this, I think this is the only way out, because we don't have money, yeah. but these people, when you Buy, sell it to them for a, a short period, 10, 15, 20 years. The, the, the boot system can, can work in this case, so it, it can be encouraged. But also is dependent on the country, the stability. So to what extent will the company, the American company in particular, be interested to develop in Sudan or to invest in Sudan in the area of agriculture? America is known to be one of the best countries in agriculture, especially cotton in the south. It's, it's very important to also keep in mind that, you know, it's not just the, uh, the American uh, companies that are interested. There is a lot of interest from, you know, EU states, uh, EU-based businesses, uh, Middle East, uh, Asia. There is a lot of interest in, uh, in investing in Sudan, in particular, as you mentioned, in the uh, agriculture sector. However, uh, I always say, you know, when we want to evaluate something, let's put ourselves in the shoes of the uh, other person. When we, you know, think of, you know, put yourself in a place of an American investor or a uh, European investor or Asian investor, um, Sudan has, a, you know, a very fertile land. There is water, uh, there is the sun, um, but unfortunately, there is no, uh, there is no approach of, you know, using solar energy as an alternative. Mm -hmm. uh, there is no, I cannot trust the banking system. Uh, there is political instability. Uh, the investment laws are not clear taxation laws are not clear. So you will really think a lot before, before uh, approaching Sudan and to actually invest. I believe that with the current situation, with the uh, complications that are existing at we, as we speak in the economy, it will be a matter of, um, you know, I think it's going to take long before companies actually start implementing. I have no doubt about the intention of, um, you know, several uh, sectors even uh, that will be developed in Sudan uh, by you know a lot of interest from the international community but it's a matter of uh, you know really how are we going to mitigate these uh, these uh, problems I always say you know uh, I put myself in a, in the shoes of, of someone let's say from, uh, from 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 the US and I want to invest in agriculture why would I come to Sudan if I cannot trust the banking system if I cannot trust uh, the electricity, the infrastructure, the roads, electricity, uh, access to water, uh, you know, even issues like climate change that have a very significant uh, impact on the, on, the, um, on the agricultural sector in Sudan. So as long as these issues exist and that there are no uh, uh, serious steps 
into mitigating these problems, uh, mainly taken by the, by, by the government, it will be very challenging for companies to, to come to Sudan. We keep hearing about, you know, uh, this delegation visited from this country, this bank signed with this bank, uh, but there is no actual uh, results because, because of these uh, factors, I think. Now, this video is so Abdurrahim, what do you can write? Because uh, Bakri is not very optimistic about an immediate, immediate future. He, 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 he said that these companies are genuine. They are genuine, really genuine, having in mind, and they know that the country is full of resources in all directions, especially in the food and the agriculture, because there will be an eminent food shortage in the coming few years, as, as stipulated by the FAO, International Food Organization. They know that food. Uh, it will be a problem. And they know that people, they know that Sudan has all these uh, resources. So what can you add to his, um, he's not optimistic, pessimism that, do you think that it will, it will, the, the people will come at any, anyhow they will come, they will come? Uh, or, they will, or they will try to modify or do help Maybe the, the coming of the United Nations, uh, unit time this United Nations integrated uh, transitional mission in Sudan, which is already in, in Sudan, they will, they will part of the problem is that they lay the foundation for others to, to come and help. So one of the issues that they will look into in the administration of the country. So what can you add to, to uh, uh, what Bakri said about, about the coming of the companies? Different, they are interested, but they are not willing to come at any, uh, in, a, in any conditions? Um, I think on the contrary, Bakri is stating that um, there is a genuine interest in Sudan, but there's a lot of missing aspects that uh, the government needs to uh, fulfill. Um, if we look at policies, they should have a checklist uh, which, you know, with clear policies, uh, directives that these international companies can be able to uh, comprehend and have faith in. And if you look at needs for investment, you need basic needs like infrastructure, uh, harmony between uh, uh, all the different uh, ministries or policies that are in place in order to entice investment, even for local businessmen, uh, which at the point in time, it's still missing. If we look at harmony uh, between the different ministries and policies, there is a lot of contradicting policies and a lot of, lot of um, unaccompanying policies that should be in place which are not in place yet in order for uh, a certain segment to operate uh, efficiently. So internationally we need to have standards which are there in place in order for these organizations to be able to invest and um, even for the local investments the government should concentrate on having a smooth um, um, operation <coughs> Uh, with the private sector mm -hmm. in order to entice more business and put more faith in the economy and in business as a whole. So, so you think that there, there is this, this one of my questions, that lack of coordination between the ministry of the uh, economic sector. You are saying that there is a lack of co no coordination. The, 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 uh, sometimes they take Minister of Industry, uh, Trade and Commerce, they issue certain um, directives to the import and export and without coordination with other uh, ministries. That's one of the reasons. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I think it's, b it's been uh, very clear that uh, a lot of these bodies are operating in silos. Um, we've seen a lot of um, regulations come out and then it's been retracted uh, a few weeks or a month later because um, the, the decision was deemed you know, inappropriate or uh, it had a negative effect. And part of this is because there is uh, probably not as much coordination as there needs to be between Ministry of Finance, Ministry of Trade, and as an example, uh, or um, uh, you know, the Customs Authority and uh, um, uh, the Ministry of Trade. There's a lot of things that, um, 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 let's say, uh, fall in the loopholes when there's um, miscoordination or lack of coordination between uh, the different governing bodies. Okay. That, that, that is uh, very important. That's one of my questions. That, that lack, there is, I agree with you. I agree that lack of coordination. Some decisions are contradicting it, each contradicting the other. But now we are almost coming to the end of our episode. Uh, my question to, to Bakri, maybe the last question to Bakri, uh, the important, you said in your uh, statements here, unlike other 
economists, they believe that there will be no solution, no solution without or before coming to a stable governance system. Yeah. Now we have a problem. As you know that after the ratification and signing of the agreement in Juba, it was on the 3rd of October. And in that agreement, they, it was stipulated that certain item, like formation of the government, within two weeks. Now we are coming after, next week we are coming to the fourth month. Yes. Four months, till this moment, the, the, the people did not agree on the government, the traditional government, the legislative uh, council, the partnership council, or whatever. So, do you still believe that without a setup or without a governance system which is stable, beyond doubt stable, nobody will be interested or will be able and will, will, will not come to Sudan to give a helping hand? Yeah. Do you I, always, with? I always say, you know, that economy uh, and politics uh, are two faces of the same coin. Uh, it's very, um, um, you know, naive to say that, okay, focus on uh, policy, uh, you know, reform, and then we come to the e economics or vice versa. I, I believe that, you know, these two elements need to be kept, you know, going in parallel. Okay. It's very, 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 very important that we keep that in mind. Anyone who would say that, okay, the problem, economic problem of Sudan or the political problem of Sudan would be solved in, um, in a matter of short period. It's, it's, it's not going to happen. Uh, we need to be realistic about this. Uh, what, what we're basically lacking to see is basically just starting, you know, on the right foot. Having the, you know, having, like the very first decisions that came out of, uh, of policymakers in Sudan uh, um, addressing these issues, uh, even in an attempt of addressing them parallelly, is you see that these, um, as Abdul Rahim said, lack of coordination, lack of clear policies. Uh, and this is, you know, instead of trying to mitigate the issue, is actually complicating the issue. So I would say that it's really important uh, that, uh, you know, the very first steps that we need to take in that direction is to at least start by, you know, really addressing um, the issues with, uh, with a realistic uh, point of view, uh, not forgetting one side uh, uh, and focusing on the other, but rather to keep both um, uh, economic uh, and, politics. and politics at the same, at the same uh, direction. At the end of the day, in Sudan, um, uh, the political scene is, is governed highly by the by the people, uh, you know, day day to day life. So this, these are the main uh, main challenges that I think uh, the government need to f to focus mm -hmm. on. As well. Okay, my last question, Abdul Rahim, we have only one minute or so, one or two minutes. Is a very important uh, question. People they talk about the the effect of the foreign companies on the business of telecommunication. Without mentioning names, the telecommunications. Many countries they have a complete monopoly on the telecommunication, like Ethiopia. Uh, do you think that the uh, these foreigners, these foreign companies of telecommunication, um, they have any effect, that adverse effect, bad effect on the value of the pound by buying the, uh, because they receive their money revenues in, in Sudanese pounds, and they are foreign companies, they have to transfer it in a way or another. Do, do, what do you think of this uh, allegation, maybe, let us say allegation till now? Uh, I think in uh, uh, the, the, the fact that there are foreign companies operating in any segment, let's say telecom, is um, to the benefit of the consumer because uh, there will be competition, there will be better services, and uh, this is probably the initial uh, reasoning behind allowing licenses for international companies. I think these companies are susceptible to the same... Uh, um, pressure or needs in which even local companies operate in because they need uh, initially they made an investment and if it's a foreign country it brought in uh, foreign uh, direct investments from abroad and then they need to operate if they have an infrastructure if they have um, um, softwares if they have hardwares they need to purchase they need to pay for licenses they need to pay uh, their people and they need to uh, uh, increase the infrastructure especially for telecom you cannot necessarily state that uh, these companies had a, a major or drastic effect uh, separate from any other local entity uh, because we've seen that they've also have issues in terms of transferring money and um, this made them um, invest in other local um, 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 fields in order to counteract uh, the inability to transfer uh, money abroad to their shareholders. Okay. 
that is uh, good. I think we covered uh, almost a lot of points or maybe important points, but uh, now uh, we run short of time. Thank you, dear gentlemen, for being with me in this episode, uh, which was an important episode on the economy of the country and the crisis, which is now everybody is feeling the scarcity and commodities and the skyrocketing prices of the uh, commodities and the uh, pound dwindling, the pound uh, value dwindling. So thank you very much for being with me in this episode. Thank you, dear viewers, for being with us in the last 50 or 55 minutes. So hope to see you next week on another issue, uh, hoping to be all in good health and wealth. Thank you. <laughs>